the chef, he was evil and awful. His recipes simply unlawful. The soup of the day was blood. The entree was fingers flambe on a waffle. Uh, oh, hello. <clears throat> Welcome back to Creepy Cheapies. Come on in and take a few minutes out of your busy week of trying to figure out what in the world is wrong with people. And uh, join me for a few minutes here to talk about and discuss and uh, appreciate the art of masks. Yeah. Now, you know, anytime you come up with a good uh, pun, a good play on words, a good word that sounds like another word, and you combine two words together and make something that sounds funny and clever out of it, somebody else has already thought of it, I find. I, many times, I, you know, if I had a nickel for every time I thought of a joke and thought, hey, hey, I bet I'm the first guy ever to think of that particular play on words, and then found out uh, shortly thereafter that uh, that joke had, had been used before. And, uh, you know, you, it's not a good feeling when you're like, that movie came out when? 1962. Oh, yeah, you know. Uh, but that'll happen. And one such uh, instance of uh, sort of a pun is the word Frightmare, which, see, combines fright <coughs> with nightmare. So it's Frightmare. Uh, there have been several movies by that title. The first one I'm aware of is a pretty good, pretty creepy one from the 70s, a British movie, also known as Once Upon a Frightmare. Uh, that was a good one about a family finding out something extremely unsavory about their uh, elderly mom and dad, and it's kind of a Hitchcock weird uh, kind of uh, thing, but there was that Frightmare. Then in the 80s, there was a very disappointing one called Frightmare, starring Ferdinand Maine, briefly. Uh, an actor I always liked a lot, although he, do, he didn't show up in enough movies to suit me, but um, he played a horror star in a kind of Vincent Price, Christopher Lee uh, tradition who dies right away and then is a kind of zombie ghost ghoul thing through most of it. Now that one was almost titled The Horror Star, but I think Frightmare is probably a better title for it because The Horror Star uh, dies off pretty early on and isn't in it much and it isn't very scary or suspenseful and it wasn't a very good film, but it did have some points of interest, including you get to see parts of Forrest J. Ackerman's collection of monsters and masks and such uh, from that time in the 80s, and appearances by some notable people, including Leon Askin and Jeffrey Combs. And how did I get onto a series of movie reviews? I don't know. But there was another one in 2005 called Frightmare. That one was also released under the title Paranoid, although it was pretty generic and probably should have been released under the title uninspired Halloween knockoff number 3468. But no matter, Frightmare also turned out to be a popular name for masks. And I can think of uh, at least two that came before today's Frightmare. Two masks, uh, there was a great one uh, by the late great Ray Hykus, a green, enthusiastic looking green monster with big teeth. It was kind of a classic mask for years and years. That was the first Frightmare I was aware of. They also painted it white for a while and offered it as simply Ghost. Green version was Frightmare, white version was Ghost. And if uh, you're paying attention here, you might want to take notes because there may be a pop quiz at any time. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh yes, Frightmare. Uh, then there was another Frightmare mask a bit later from Distortions, and that was a cool one too. Kind of a, kind of Evil Dead, not not really like the Evil Dead, but that's the closest thing I can think of to compare it to, is Evil Dead. And it had this cool green tongue, this pickle green tongue that was neat. But unfortunately, that one suffered from uh, hot glue used as slimy stuff on his mouth and the hot glue didn't adhere to the latex very well and tended to chip and come off and take the paint with it so it's hard to find a distortions frightmare in uh, perfect mint condition today although it would be cool if somebody you know found the mold and made a, a new edition of those but if today's mask which is also called did you guess yet frightmare if today's mask looks familiar it's probably not because any of those movies because he was not in any of those films 
Also, there were a couple of other Frighteners. There are several short films called Frightmare, and I believe there was a TV series uh, that was a horror anthology in the tradition of like a Night Gallery or Tales from the Crypt or Creep Show, something like that. I love that kind of TV series, by the way. I like those shows. Um, that kind of thing called uh, 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 Frightmares with an S on the end. But anyway, he's not in uh, that either. He's not in any of those. And he also has nothing to do with the previous masks called Frightmare. But if he looks a little familiar to you, hmm, what does that mean? It means stop going to family reunions if he looks familiar to you. It also means you may be thinking of a similar mask, a company called Fearscape that was only in the mask business for a few years and made some wonderful stuff, some really great quality I would say closest to Horror Dome in quality. Fearscape was mostly Horror Dome-ish in terms of uh, design and uh, quality and such. But one of theirs was a John Fuller creation called Casper. Not, not, not that Casper, not, no, not the friendly ghost, Casper. This was Casper the unfriendly ghost. Uh, he looked a lot like this, uh, except I think he had black eyes Hopefully, we have a picture of him. I think he had black eyes instead of yellow ones, but he was very similar, old Casper, with a K, uh, to this guy, which came out in 2021 from the Creeps at October Studios. And how do we know that? There's the October tag right on there, and that's October with a K, by the way, which is why uh, people sometimes have trouble finding it online because they look, they spell October you know, the traditional way, O-C-T-O-B-E-R. It's actually a K for uh, for the studio. So if you want to look them up, you can get a thing like this for around $45. Wow, that's a good deal. And I have seen him sold for a good deal more than that, like $80. And really, if you told me you paid $80 for one of these, yeah, I would not think that sounded uh, like too much because he's a lot of monster. He's very well made. He's very sturdy quality. He's got this little uh, hole in the back to keep the slit from tearing on up the back of his head should you decide to wear Mr. Frightmare. As for what he is, you could pretty much use your imagination and wear whatever you want to with this guy. He could be a ghost. He could be an uh, uh, alien he, from another planet. He could be just some sort of supernatural vague entity that doesn't quite fit any normal classification like vampire or werewolf or zombie or ghost. I think he's just a sort of all-purpose horrible ugly monster. He's got great, great looking teeth, very nicely molded with really good depth to him. And this was sort of a resurrection. It was deliberate because uh, a lot of people liked the old uh, Casper mask and Fearscape went out of business ages ago and you haven't been able to get one. This is not the same sculpture, it's just similar. It's just similar, this is a different sculpture, but it definitely has the look. And then look at this fabulous paint job. Again, 40, 50 bucks for one of these, look at the paint job. I did not do anything to this, this is just out of the box. Nice shiny stuff on the teeth, shiny eyes that have kind of a blotchy, uneven look to them that makes him look really creepy, and then this, uh, awesome dark red purpley shading that's kind of like bruising that gives him a weird spooky sort of undead look which is why i think he might qualify as a ghost although if this is the ghost what did the human look like you might ask anyway uh design yourself a costume to go with this thing could be anything from a white uh, robe white sheet gown kind of a ghost outfit to a space suit to a raggedy zombie type outfit, you could use him for pretty much anything at the haunted house or the haunted hayride or the local bake sale. So uh, get yourself a Frightmare if you like uh, this uh, kind of thing. And if you don't, you're probably not watching Dr. Lady. And anyway, uh, it's time for the wrap up. So wrap up one of these in the bag and take it home and frighten your family with it. Good night.